Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm going to be sharing some ideas for getting the most out of your cover plates or background dies. And I'm actually going to be working with the birch trees. Now some dies, cover plate dies, are going to be more versatile than others. I chose this one to work with because it does not have a border edge, cutting edge, at the exterior of the shape. So I can use this and line it up onto the front of a card that I've already scored and go ahead and send that through my die cutting machine using some washi tape to keep it anchored. And I'm going to get the die cut or the impression depending on the type of cover plate it is. I'll get that right directly on the front of my card without having to add an extra panel of cardstock. So there you go. I've got that nice window opening. And in order to fold this cardstock, because it's a heavier, it's by Basil, it's like 100 pound cardstock, I think. Um, I'm going to use a straight edge ruler along that gutter crease there to help me get it started. And then once I get it started, I can take my bone folder and go ahead and give it a nice good crease. But that really helps, especially when you have a cut line from a die so close to a fold line, is to just get it started there with a straight edge. Now, what would I do with this? Well, I think it's really pretty just like this, but you could take some pretty background paper or some contrasting color of cardstock and just cut it to just slightly smaller than a quarter sheet and line the inside of it. So that's one easy way to use it. Another way um, is to create a window effect on a panel. And I decided I was going to do this uh, vellum thing. I haven't done this in a long time, and I was just like, I had a hankering to do it. So <laughs> I grabbed my brayer, I cut a quarter sheet of vellum, and I'm just going to go ahead and brayer some color on there. I'm using Catherine Pooler dye inks, the new apricot and terracotta colors. Started with the lightest color first. You always want to roll and lift, roll and lift. Don't roll back and forth. Um, just roll across the surface, start off the surface, and then come on to the surface of your project and roll off onto the other side. And the same thing when you're inking the brayer, because if you just roll it back and forth, it's only going to ink up one side. But always start with your lightest colors first and then um, clean off your brayer as you need to if you're switching back and forth between orange and purple so that you don't contaminate your ink pads. So once I had all the color brayered on there that I wanted, I grabbed that panel and I took it, um, sandwiched it in between a piece of typing paper. And the reason for that is that um, I didn't want to wait for however long it took to air dry, and I didn't want to grab my heat gun. I just decided I would blot away the excess ink using the brayer and some clean typing paper. But you certainly can, you know, allow, if you're patient, I'm not the patient type, so <laughs> I'm always like, how can I speed this up? How can I make this process go faster? <laughs> So once I have that blotted off nicely, I can take that and mount it to the inside uh, of a panel that I've already cut the birch trees out of and use some foam tape to mount that up onto my card. I could also use it to create a shaker window. This would be a great way to do a shaker card and have all of that glorious space there filled up with shaker bits. And of course, some cover plates cut out little bits that are perfect to create your shaker material. So keep that in mind too. Now, another thing I really love to do with, uh, especially when there's some intricate details uh, on the cover plate or background die is to mist some, this is that letterpress paper, which is just delicious, thick, cottony, um, the texture of it against your hand is just very, very luxurious. And I love to mist some water onto that letterpress paper and then place it down onto the die. And the great thing about working with the Spellbinders um, system is they have the information about what sandwich you need to create to do this method. It's printed right on the platform. It tells you exactly how to make your sandwich. So I send that through, and once I remove the rubber plate and the embossing plate, you can see I've got that gorgeous pattern there, and it is embossed into the paper. And you can flip it over and use the other side, but I really love the raised side of this image. So I just kept the paper flipped over and mounted it to a simple card and added a sentiment, and it's very elegant, um, very sophisticated look and it just creates that illusion of letterpress love that 
Another thing you can do is turn your cover plate, um, depending on the design, of course, into a stencil. So I'm using some Inka Dinka Do masking paper that I've already sent through my machine and die cut that out. And then I'm going to pull back the liner paper a little bit. And you, I suppose you could use regular typing paper, but then you gotta figure out how to get some all over adhesive on it. So I, I just find that Inka Dinka Do masking paper is like my favorite. It works really great. But I think Judykins has a really, um, the Eclipse tape would also work for this. Um, but I'm working with this because that's what I've got. And I'm going to very carefully pull the liner back partially so I can get it all lined up and then go ahead and get a smooth, perfect application of my mask onto that quarter sheet of Nina Solar White. Again, I'm going to be doing some ink blending. This time I'm using those brushes. And again, the same colors of Catherine Pooler ink, the apricot, only I got kind of heavy handed there. <laughs> And then I'm going to use the terracotta. And this time I blotted off some of the excess ink um, until it was almost dry of ink. And then I could go very light handed on the surface there. So I'm just, I have to keep practicing my scales because I have a tendency to be very heavy handed. And it helps when I hold the handle way out at the other end so I don't apply so much pressure. And then when you do the big reveal, you pull back that mask and you've got this beautiful stenciled effect. And you can get the same results also if you made a like a disposable stencil using your cover plate, um, depending on the design, of course, out of cardstock, like 80 pound cardstock. And then you applied like glitter gel or embossing paste over the top of it because you need something that can withstand the moisture of those uh, mediums um, to get to use you know this as a um, stencil but anyway this is one idea you could do and then you could take it even further and create a you know a, car, a temporary cardstock stencil and add that glimmer paste that's something that uh, miss uh, carly t minner loves to do now uh, i also like to foil my cover plate dies or any any detail dies that I have, actually, this will work. So I'm going to heat up my Gemini uh, platform here. Um, and once it beeps green at me and it's on the lowest setting, I've already got my cardstock and the die kind of made up like an embossing folder <laughs> sort of thing by hinging them together with a piece of washi tape. And then I brought my foil in and the foil is pretty side against the die and ugly side against the paper. And then the the die itself goes down against the heating element there and I set it for 20 seconds. So lowest heat setting, 20 seconds or 15 seconds. It really doesn't take that long or that much. Now the great thing about using the uh, Gemini foil, the foils themselves, that brand of foil, is they don't require a super high heat setting. They work great on a low setting. And one thing uh, I've learned when working with the uh, Spellbinders, glimmer foils is they require a considerably higher amount of heat and a much hotter plate um, to get the um, uh, the foiled effect but so I like working with the uh, Gemini foils so here you can see I just kind of did some ink blending very very lightly with whatever was left on my brushes over the top of this to get a really pale effect so gorgeous but what are we going to do with the waste well the brand new um, solid hot foil plate has been released and I'm just going to let that sit there on my foil press. And again, I'm on the lowest setting and I did some experimentation so that you would not waste as much foil as I did because I'd never worked with the solid foil plate before. So I l used the lowest setting because I did try using a higher setting and it didn't work out very well. So lowest setting. I let it sit on there for about a minute and then I added the foil and the paper and then I put the hot plate on and two 80 pound cardstock shims and I'll have this recipe listed over on the blog so you can see clearly what kind of sandwich I made here for this. And then I sent it through my machine after I had the timer on there for about 20 seconds to let everything uh, like the paper and the foil itself heat up. So this is extremely hot. So I like having these magnet tweezers there. You just clamp them shut and the magnet will grab a hold of the die. And then you can move it to that cooling, silicone cooling pad there. 
So I'm going to give it a little bit to cool off so I can handle it. So once it's cool to the touch, I'm going to remove the paper. And there I can already tell just by looking at it that I got a most excellent foiling. So this was, I think, my third or fourth attempt where I figured out the right settings and pressure um, and timing to get this end result. But I was so, so excited. At first, I was getting really discouraged um, and then when I hit the sweet spot, I was like, yes. And so I made a note of that and I put it in the, um, in the pocket of this particular die or not this die, not the birch trees die, but my solid foiling plate die. I put a note in there so that I know when I want to work with Gemini foils and the solid plate, this is the setting that I need to use to foil the waste. And there you can see I've got six different ways to use this particular cover plate. Take a look at the cover plates and background dies that you have and see how many of these techniques you can apply to them. And you might be surprised how much versatility you have in your background dies. I know I was like super stoked <laughs> that I could do all these different things. And I know there's even more. I just didn't get to all of them yet. But anyway, I hope this inspires you. Give some of these ideas a try and thanks for watching.